All right, today I'm going to show you how to stun players and non-playing characters. So we can run up, we get close, my icon will turn into this little hammer. I'll show you how to do that too. Boom, knocks him out. Knocks him out. That's pretty cool. I am on the left, right? So if I go over to the right, I can't move, right? I'm this guy right here. I can't move, I can't jump, I can't do anything because I'm stunned until it wears off. Come on, there we go. And now I go to make a run for it. But he's gonna go after me. Gotcha. Anyway, I thought that'd be pretty cool. Definitely worth doing. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and show you how to stun things, right? Stun players and non-playing characters. All right, so I got a fresh world here. Let's go ahead and get our hammer icon that we're gonna change. You use your own icon, of course. I'll put this link in the description. It's all pixelated because it's only 64 by 64 pixels and it's all stretched out here. There should be a green get button. Go ahead and press it and then you'll get it. I obviously have it because I created it. So if we go over to our fresh world, hit home, go to the toolbox, go to inventory, go to my, oops, that's my meshes, my images. There we go. There's our hammer. We're going to use that. So make sure you have some sort of icon you can use so it can show you whether somebody's stunnable or not. All right, so let's just go ahead and close that. And go to plugins, build rig, man rig. I'm gonna put a rig here so we could test out our stun. And then we could also do our animation here too. Cool, let's go down to, let's see, starter player, there we go. And then starter character scripts, hit that plus sign add a local script, right? Local script, we'll call this stun loc, local script. Cool, we're gonna need a few variables. We're gonna need the user input service, game get service, user input service. We're gonna need the player, right? Game get service, players service, local player. And then we're gonna need the mouse, right? We'll get that from the player get mouse. Cool. We are going to need replicated storage. So RS will stand for replicated storage, game get service, replicated storage. Why do we need that? We need to send a remote event to the server when we go to bonk somebody on the head. So we can't do that on server side. You can't mess with other players locally. You have to do that on the server. So replicated storage, hit that plus. Let's add a remote event and let's call it Stun R E, right? Make a variable for that. I'll make that a lowercase s as the var as the variable name. Stun R E. Uh, R S. Wait for child. And there's stun R E. This has to be spelled the same and the caps the same as this right here, right? This could be whatever you want, but it should make sense. All right. What else do we need? We need a sound. Oh man. Let's put a, let's do script. We'll put it on the script. We don't have a sound. Let's get a sound. Let's go to the base plate, home, toolbox, marketplace, audio. Let's look for bonk. Stinky has one. Oh, uh, funky. Let's get the funky guy. Drag it into the workspace. And then we'll drag that sound, it's in the workspace, down and put it on our stun loc. I'm gonna call it bonk. Nice. So go to stun loc and then for that wait for child, write bonk. So we got our bonk sound. Nice. And now we'll have this stunnable, I don't know if I spelled that right. Seems like there's too many ends. Anyway, the stunnable flag, as long as it's consistent, you can call it whatever you want as long as you're consistent. That's gonna do some checks to see whether they're stunnable or not. I used to have a lot more checks in here, but the video got too long. So let's get the user input service, input began, connect to this anonymous function. I'm just gonna pass in input. You get two, you get input and you get the game processing processed flag, but we'll just use input. So if mouse target and input User input type equals equals two equals for comparison. Enum user input type mouse button one. Then let's put this on a separate line just so that you can see it. You can leave it on the same line, but just so that you can see it for the video. 
All right, now let's get the item, right? So that was that mouse.target, what is that target? Let's check to see if there is a parent associated with that. Sometimes when things are disappearing in the workspace, the parent disappears before the, before the item, like especially when people die. So we're going to check to see if the item has a humanoid associated with it. We're going to call it ehum for enemy hume if we find it. Equals item dot parent. That's why we check for the parent. Find first child humanoid, right? If the ehum exists, then what should we do? Let's do let's do an ehum and stunnable. All right. Let's play the sound. And then let's fire our stun re to the server and we'll do our stun stuff on the server right but this will play the sound locally for us and then i'm going to make uh, our icon change and stuff too right and we got to check to see if we're hovering over something that's stunnable for the icon to change so i just copied this right i copied that code i pasted it here so i don't have to redo a lot of stuff so input changed i'm going to change that the input changed this looks good i don't need this and clause I'm just going to be hovering and then this looks good this looks good here i want to get the humanoid root part humanoid root part because i want to oops hrp enemy humanoid root part because i want to check for distances right so let's go ahead and make that humanoid root part cool and that's hrp for the humanoid root part, we don't need the stunnable, right? But we can get rid of this. We need to check the distance, dist, right? So ehrp.position minus hrp.position magnitude, right? So the magnitude, oh, uh, do we not have an hrp? We don't. This is for us, right? We have an enemy HRP, but we don't have our HRP. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's do that up at the top, right? So yeah, we could do it here. I will say local char. We do have a player. Oh, that's why I got the player too for the HRP. Get the character or player dot character added weight in case the character is not quite ready. So this is an event that'll fire and we're gonna wait for that to event to fire to make sure that the character is there if it's not here already. Cool. Now we need to get that HRP, right? HRP, char, wait for child, humanoid root part. There. That's us. That's our humanoid root part. This is our enemy. Now we're good. All right, so the, the one check we're going to do is like, just to see how close we are. We're going to check to see if the HRP is, is, is there. And then we'll get the distance. We'll say if distance is less than eight, then we're going to make sure it's stunnable. We're going to set this to stunnable, All right? Stunnable equals true. And then let's change our mouse icon right here. Let's see, we want to RBX, let me move that. RBX asset ID, it's going to be that hammer. Make sure we got that right. RBX asset ID colon slash slash. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go to the toolbox. And oh, we got to go to inventory. My images. There's that hammer. Right click. Copy asset ID. Paste that. Make sure we got it right. I do a control V to paste. Boom. Let's get rid of this. That way we can see everything. All right. Now the problem is this is going to turn everything true. Once it turns to true once, it's never going to turn back. And then we're not going to be able to turn our hammer back unless we go ahead, copy this. Whenever we start that input change, let's just go ahead and make stunnable false. Right now we're going to change this back to the system mouse icon, get rid of the ID system mouse is a little bit different, right? Uh, that's what system cursor slash 
arrow. That's the default, right? So we'll make sure it's default, and then we can change it if we get this condition. Cool. Let's try this out. Let's, so we should just have the hammer change, and we should have the bonk. We don't have the animation yet, right? So there's a little guy. Let's run up. Boom. Nice. Nice. That's working. All right. Now let's go to our server side. Yeah, let's make the animation first. Then we'll do it on the server side, right? So we got our little guy here. Let's go to plugins, animation editor. All right, click on him. Let's call it like stun. Cool. Now let's change the animation priority. If we go to these three dots, uh, set animation priority. Oh man, check this out. I hate when they do this. Roblox did a ninja update. So now there's several action priorities. I believe this one will be fine. We just want it to be over movement and, and yeah, over movement, right? Boom. But we are going to freeze the movement anyway. I don't know why they did that. It's probably in this what's new that I didn't read. I, sh I probably should. Let's save it now that we have our new action priority. And yeah, that's good. Click on him. Let's make him look like he's slumped over, right? In a stun-like effect. Uh, there we go. Maybe the head. Uh, there we go. Slumped over. Gotta get that arm. Yeah, dangling arms. Dangling arms. Cool. All right, nice. He's all slumped over. You can do something with the feet and everything too, but this is a video. You gotta be kind of quick. So this is only one point. Make sure that you loop it because I'm not gonna do that in the code. So loop it here. Right now, go here, save this just in case we want to edit it. It's going to be in the dummy, it's going to be under save and M saves right here, stun. But we don't want to use that. We want to publish this to Roblox, stun is fine, submit, and get this ID. See this ID? Hit that, hit that little square thingy. ID copied. All right, so don't get distracted. We have an ID in our buffer. We're going to go down, server script service. Hit the plus sign, add a regular script, which is also known as a server script. Regular scripts are server scripts. Let's call this stun as opposed to stun low because it's server. Hit the plus, add an animation, copy that or paste that animation in. Don't copy it or you'll lose it. Control V. There. There's a little number right there. All right. Now, let's see. Let's call this stun. Uh, Done and in. Awesome. Get rid of that. This isn't going to take that long. So we need to get the remote event, right? We fired a remote event on the client. We need to catch it on the server. Remote events are the doorway, right? The doorway. So we're going to go replicated storage. We've got to get a variable for replicated storage so we can get our remote event. What are we going to call it? Stun RE. Why not? Why, why, call, it this, why call it something different? Replicated storage, wait for child, wait for child, stun RE. Nice. And then we need our animation, right? Stun, anim, that script, wait for child, stun, anim. Awesome. When we catch our stun RE, we're going to do this on server event. We're going to catch that. Connect it to this anonymous function. We're going to get two parameters. We're going to get the player. We're going to get the e -hum. You might remember us putting the enemy humanoid in there. You may, you may not remember us putting the player because we did not. This comes in for free because it got sent from the client. It says, hey, it came from me. All right? Just a Roblox way of doing things. So let's do a variable called stun track. We're going to get that when we get our enemy humanoid animator load animation. And that's the stun anim. We're going to get a reference to the track that we just loaded on the humanoid, right? And that way we can play it, right? Play. Cool. So we'll get the e hum walk speed. Whoops, I got two p's in there. Walk speed. We'll make that zero. E hum. We have to do this use jump power. 
use jump power true. It's a new thing, right? Because if you make the jump power, which is what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to make the jump power zero, jump power zero, and this is not checked if this is false, it's going to use some auto power or whatever, and it's going to mess you up, right? It used to not be like that. Messed up some of my older videos. We'll just make a 10 second wait, right? And then after 10 seconds, let's just copy this. Boom. Move that back. Make the stop. Oops. I made it stun. Stop. There we go. Stop. Walk speed, typically 16. I'll just leave this off. I always use jump power, right? And then 50. Cool. All right. So we should be good to go. Let's check this out. Let's check it out on the test server. So we'll hit test. Hit start. I will pause the video because it takes a really long time for my computer to start this up. All right, here we go. Ah, oh, there's a dummy. Let's try it on the dummy. Nice. Let's try it on the player. Oh, look at this. The hair. We got to account for the hair. The hair, the hair messes things up. Let's go ahead and do that. There's a few things that we need to check for. I definitely want to get the hair fixed. So the hair is blocking us. Right, we can still we can still click on them. The problem is, hair's an accessory. So let's do an if item dot name equals equals handle. Right, we're gonna have to go up two levels. So handle to accessory to character down to the humanoid. Right, and the HRP because we're doing that check. So we're gonna say ehum equals item parent, parent, find first child, humanoid. Now, what we can do is we could just make sure that um, if e hum, we don't even really need to do this, uh, equals nil, and that's a handle. We don't need to do that. That's an extra check. That's fine. I'll leave it there. I'm going to copy this. We're going to do something similar down here right under the humanoid root part, right? Copy, 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 but this is humanoid root part. Humanoid root part. There we go. Let's see if we get the hair. Once again, hit start. All right, let's check it out. Who am I? I'm this guy. Oh yeah. Now when we hover over the hair. So backpacks too, right? Backpacks would mess us up. Hair would mess us up but this is pretty good. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now I don't have a debounce in here, right? But if you hit him again, because the way we have it set up on the server, it's not going to keep piling up, right? Watch this. Boom. So that's just, that, that you can, you can play around with that if you want. Anyway, I thought this was pretty cool and definitely worth doing. Good luck with that. And I will see you in the next video.